Uh, in this video, we are going to discuss uh, uh, an introduction to the cohort study designs. And uh, as we know, I mean, we know that we have uh, three categories of cohort study design, but in this video, we are going to focus on the uh, basic uh, principles of uh, uh, the cohort study design, as we can see in this slide, which is uh, from the uh, Beagle Hall, 1993, uh, illustrating the uh, uh, cohort study design in which we have the uh, population and then we have uh, people who are free of the disease. Some of them are exposed to the disease and uh, uh, to the exposed to the disease agent and others were not exposed and then <coughs> we follow them over a period of time to find those who developed the disease and those who did not develop the disease among those who were exposed and the, and also among those who were not exposed, we can see some they develop uh, the disease and others they do not develop the disease. So uh, co the word cohort comes from the Latin cohorts and was the ancient Roman term for a group of soldiers who marched together into battle. And thus a cohort is a group of persons within a defined period, and usually they are defined based on their exposure status. In other words, whether they were exposed, for example, to a disease agent um, uh, assumed to be uh, etiologically associated with the uh, disease or the outcome. Or upon this exposure status, then we can subdivide the cohort members into exposed and uh, non-exposed uh, groups, and then we follow them if we are uh, doing or we are implementing um, uh, prospective cohort study design. And uh, in addition also, uh, the cohort members are either exposed or not exposed to the factor under the investigation, as we have just mentioned. And then we can talk about some examples of cohorts. For example, doctors graduated in 1996, the female children born in 1995, the women got married in the year 2000, for example, and the workers appointed in uh, uh, asbestos industry in 1960, or nursing staff appointed in Khartoum Teaching Hospital in the year 2000, for example, these are the cohorts. Now we can talk about the types of cohorts. There are three uh, categories of cohorts, and it is important to discuss here, uh, and this will facilitate for us uh, to understand the various types of cohort designs uh, later. A close cohort is one with fixed membership, in the sense that the uh, once the cohort is defined by enrolling uh, subjects and follow-up begins, no one can be added. And the number of uh, subjects in close cohort may decline because or due to death or due to loss of follow-up or attrition, but no additional uh, members or subjects are added. As a result, a close cohort always gets smaller over time due to the continuous attrition that some of the uh, members or the subjects will leave the cohort or will migrate or will die to other causes and so on. And we have, the, for example, the citizens of uh, Japan uh, uh, who were exposed to the radiation when atomic bombs were dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki during the Second World War would be considered uh, members of a fixed or close cohort that was defined by an, that event. Uh, Ashin Crow and seek would classify the bombing victims as a victim cohort and make distinction, they make distinction, make distinction between the fixed cohort and the close cohort. For example, they define a close cohort as similar to the fixed cohort, except that a fixed cohort is one that has no losses over time uh, during the follow-up period. For example, a cohort of people who attended a luncheon that resulted in an outbreak of salmonellosis, for example, um, in contrast to uh, open uh, cohort is uh, dynamic 
meaning that members can leave or be added over time during the follow-up period we can have new members added we can have current members who leave and Rossman gives an example of a state uh, for example the cancer surgery registry or the cancer uh, records for example and subjects are continuously added when they are diagnosed with uh, cancer or any uh, malignancy so new subjects are continuously added during the follow-up and subject can also leave uh, the cohort by moving to a new uh, place or uh, due to deaths, for example. Uh, the cohort study is analytical epidemiological study in which subjects are of def a defined people can be identified who are or have been or in the future may be exposed or not exposed or exposed in different degrees uh, uh, to a factor or factors uh, assumed to influence the occurrence of a given disease or other uh, outcome. And uh, uh, the main feature of the cohort design is observation of large numbers of uh, uh, cohort members or study participants over a long period, usually years, with comparison of incidence rate among those who are exposed and those who are not uh, exposed uh, to the factors uh, assumed to be etiologically associated with the disease. Uh, we have three categories of uh, cohort study designs. We have the prospective cohort study design and retrospective cohort study design and retrospective prospective cohort study design, which is also called ambidirectional uh, cohort study design. Uh, prospective cohort study design in prospective cohort studies uh, is the investigator conceive and design the study, uh, recruit subjects and collect baseline exposure data on all subjects before any of the subjects have developed any of the outcomes of interest or uh, become diseased. And the subjects are usually followed up into the future in order to record the development of any of the outcomes of interest according to the uh, type of the exposure and the duration of that exposure. And the follow-up here can be conducted through mail questionnaire or email questionnaire, phone interviews or through the internet or personally in face-to-face uh, -face interviews, physical examinations, laboratory or imaging tests and combination of all these methods so that uh, during the follow-up you can detect it who developed the disease or, or uh, compared to those who did not develop uh, the disease among uh, both groups of the among all groups of the uh, cohort. The retrospective cohort study, uh, retrospective studies also and group subjects based on their exposure status and compare them instead of disease. However, in this case, both exposure status and outcome are asserted retrospectively. And uh, in essence, the investigator jump back or go back to identify a useful cohort which was initially free of the disease or at risk based on the records. And then uh, they use whatever records are, records are available to determine is subject exposure status at the beginning of their observation uh, period, and then they are certain what subsequently happened to the subject uh, uh, and among uh, the uh, two uh, exposure uh, group or the non-exposed uh, group. Retrospective cohort studies are also longitudinal because they examine health outcomes over a span uh, of time and the distinction is that in retrospective cohort studies all of the cases of the disease have already occurred before the investigator initiate the study or start the uh, study. Uh, in contrast exposure uh, information in contrast uh, exposure information is collected at the beginning of the prospective cohort studies before any of the subjects have developed any of the outcome of interest. And uh, the at-risk period begins after baseline exposure data is collected and, tends, uh, and extends into the future. 
uh, ambidirectional cohort uh, study uh, design, which is a third category of the cohort uh, studies. Uh, these are both retrospective and uh, retrospective uh, phases of the study. And ambidirectional studies are much less common than purely prospective or retrospective uh, cohort studies, but they are conceptually consistent with and share elements of the advantages and disadvantages of both types of uh, study, as have been uh, stated in the uh, by David uh, Grimes and Kenneth uh, in cohort study, uh, which is uh, published in the epidemiology uh, series of uh, Lancet in 2002. As the name implies that the collection goes in both directions, retrospective and prospective. And this approach can be useful for uh, exposures that have both short-term and long-term outcomes so that you can go in both directions and to, take, to detect to what extent there has been uh, exposure retrospectively and prospectively. Uh, the main characteristics of cohort study design, the cohort members are selected based on their exposure status and before the occurrence of the outcome or the disease. And this is contrary uh, to the case control study where the disease and exposure have already occurred by the time we carry the study, uh, for example. And this is the main weakness of the case cohort study and it is advantage of the uh, cohort study design. The cohort members are followed for a period of time um, the newly diagnosed cases among the exposed and the non-exposed are detected. The incidence rate among the exposed and non-exposed is calculated. And as we know, the population at risk and the newly diagnosed cases as well. The study uh, goes four hours from exposure, which is the cause to disease outcome in contrast to the case control where we go backward from the effect to cause. Thus, our aim is to find uh, if ever the exposure the factor under the investigation is etiologically associated uh, with the occurrence of the uh, disease. This is the last of the uh, introduction uh, to uh, cohort study uh, designs. And uh, in the coming uh, videos, we are going to discuss each variety of the uh, cohort uh, uh, study designs. Uh, in other words, we we'll have uh, a video about the prospective cohort study design is advantages, disadvantages, and as well as the retrospective cohort study designs, and as well as the ambidirectional uh, cohort study designs. Thank you very much.